Hello. Um, uh, I want to start with the challenges that I faced during my science education studies. So, um, and I wanted to uh, talk about more about my own experience when I studied in the middle school and also in the secondary school. So what I felt during my studies was that there is a large gap between the different science subjects. For example, uh, it was really hard to target how physics, the content that is learned in physics, was related to biology, how the content that was learned in biology was related to geography and in to the chemistry as well. So um, the other challenge that I faced was this broken link between the different lessons. For example, how the different content learned in biology are linked, how, to, how the different core ideas, for example, are developed to different school years, and uh, how to have this kind of bigger picture about all of the con content that are, are learned during the school years. So, of course, one of these problems may be that uh, right now there is, and was at the time as well, this intensive curriculum, science curriculum. There were many things to learn, to teach, and the emphasis was not on the things that were interesting for the students or for the teachers as well. And of course, the way how the teachers proposed the learning content, for example, how that was presented to the uh, students. Was that only uh, the role of the students to listen, pay attention to what the teachers are saying, or is it rather on asking questions which support the meaningful learning as well? Um, and that leads uh, to the fact that the student, as I was at the, t the same time as well, I w had this low motivation towards st uh, studying s sciences and uh, also I felt uh, not so confident as well. So what I propose is that in science learning, there has to be um, emphasis on how we can uh, learn and how students can learn meaningfully the science education. So for that reason, in University of Tartu, we have a center for science education. And uh, in the center, the focus is on way how to make science education more inclusive for students and for teachers as well. Uh, also, the centre promotes the collaboration between different stakeholders, for example, the same event that we have right now in here as well. Also, how to include teachers, science educators, uh, school board members uh, to the science as well how we uh, together can solve the different problems that right now we face as well in the science education. And of course, uh, the centre addresses the fields that have been not addressed before uh, or where has been this lack of addressing as well. So what is also important is of course to share the different research projects uh, in national and also in the international level. And of course, the research supports the science teaching as well. So we have a lot to learn from the teachers. We have a lot to learn from the science educators as well. So that's important. Um, the fields of science, century of science education are really dif different as well. And all of these are important, for example, the scientific literacy, um, including health and uh, biological literacy, e-testing, which is really necessary right now as well, when we think about uh, the situation that we had last year as well, the distance learning time. Uh, also, how to promote science-related career awareness, uh, learning models, learning scenarios, also social scientific issues, uh, core ideas and 21st century skills. And of course, there are other areas as well that I'm not going to name right now. And uh, what I want to uh, emphasize right now is that how myself as a researcher has tried to um, find some solutions to the problems as well, to the challenges that I faced during my studies and uh, that I face right now as a teacher as well. 
Um, it is known that students tend to have uh, low perceived uh, perceptions uh, towards science content, especially towards the core ideas that are related to the physics and chemistry. Uh, and of course, to the 21st century skills as well, when we think about the problem solving uh, skills and the decision making skills as well. So what I want to promote is this interdisciplinarity between the different science subjects. And that was mentioned uh, in the previous uh, uh, presentations as well. How to make science more integrated. How to relate content to the skills because we cannot use the skills without having any background. So let me introduce this uh, way as well, like interdisciplinarity model. For example, the parliament. It is a model. I think that you all can agree with me. Of course, the different theories can have, we can name these as models as well. Or when we think about biology, and the, to the different nutritions, it is a model as well. Or the globe, this traditional way how the model is introduced to the students. And in chemistry, when we think about atoms and uh, their structure, it is also a model. Or DNA in biology, or periodic table in chemistry. What I propose is that there are many ways in science how to promote the interdisciplinarity between um, the science, different science subjects. Or let me introduce the energy. I think that we can all agree that the base comes from the physics, but we can talk about it in geography as well. When we talk about renewable and non-renewable -re energy. In biology, when we talk about uh, the photosynthesis, it is also related to the energy. Metabolism or the active lifestyles. So all of these things are related to the energy. So I think that you all can agree with me that there are ways how to integrate sciences as well. What I also propose is this method what science teachers can use in science studies as well. For example, how to use core ideas and how to use these uh, through the map, mind mapping method. So what I mean about these core idea uh, maps is the method where students can link their knowledge, they can construct their own knowledge related to the core idea. For example, the core ideas are fundamental, big ideas. For example, when we think about energy conversion in physics, when we think about genetic variation in biology, or from geography, weather and climate, which is really actual right now as well, or in chemistry, chemical reactions. Uh, these all core ideas can be shown through uh, the form of maps as well, and how the knowledge uh, which are related to these core ideas are received during the different school years and school levels. The design of core idea maps uh, follows the mind mapping uh, which supports the meaningful learning as well, and how to link the prior knowledge with the new knowledge. In here is this illustration about uh, the core idea map. Um, the base comes from uh, the Atlas of Scientific Literacy, but what it proposes is that when we talk about one core idea uh, that, is, that is related to the science education, um, there, are, there are a lot of the things, uh, the conceptual understandings and knowledge that are related to this core idea. And of course, um, even in the, this primary school level, uh, the knowledge about this core idea are given, but of course it is not as uh, sophisticated as it is in secondary school level. So what you can see at front of you I know that it is in small letters, but still, let's pay attention. In here you can see uh, the core idea, genetic variation. And uh, in here are shown the different grade levels, starting from the first grade to the 12th grade. 
And it shows how the knowledge has progressed over the time. So basically, what you can see from here is that how uh, the different uh, knowledge are constructed. And in here with the arrows, you can see the interconnections as well, how the different uh, conceptual understandings are connected. Uh, what is emphasized as well is that how we can uh, link the different uh, science-related careers to the core ideas as well. For example, these are also shown on the, this uh, map and to related skills as well. So what I propose is that we, for the teachers, it is important uh, to support students' meaningful learning. It means that as a teachers, uh, we have to have this kind of bigger picture at front of us. And of course, we have to uh, show it to the students as well. And uh, we have to let them uh, to construct their own knowledge. So my suggestions for practicing teachers based on my own study results are that it is important to connect teaching materials to the everyday life situations. It is important to uh, relate the content that is learned uh, during the different school years uh, to the 21st century skills as well. Uh, for example, uh, without having any background, without having any uh, content, it is hard to use uh, problem solving skills uh, and to find some solutions to the different uh, problems as well. What else is important is to collaborate uh, with the colleagues, to collaborate with different science teachers, because there are so many things that we can learn from each other as well. And uh, what else is that students need to be provided with the different uh, uh, opportunities where they can construct their own knowledge construction as well. And of course, to interconnect that to the other disciplines. Not only to concentrate in biology lesson to biology, but to concentrate also how bi biology content is related to the physics and so on. What else, and uh, what, for what I didn't give um, much attention, is that the learning environments um, needs to be uh, needs to support students' meaningful learning. Uh, it means that, uh, for example, students have to have this opportunity where they can link their new uh, new knowledge to the prior knowledge. For that, I suggest to use mind mapping method, and also. It is uh, important to consider uh, active learning approaches, such as problem solving skills or argumentation or teamwork. And uh, as I started my presentation with my own experience, I will come back uh, to the experience what students have received uh, when they uh, had this opportunity con to construct uh, these uh, core idea maps. Students found that interesting and also useful as well. Uh, they thought that it is novel and it gave them this uh, possibility uh, to be active participant as well. In, what I mean by that is that they were given this opportunity to collaborate with the, their team uh, mates to ask different questions. Uh, and in general, what students uh, felt was that uh, they like to collaborate with each other. That is also something that uh, needs to be um, emphasized during the science studies. And also they welcomed uh, the opportunity uh, to elabor elaborate their understanding about science knowledge. And uh, they also uh, perceived core the idea maps as interesting. And what's more in important is that uh, that for them, it gave them this kind of reason as well to keep motivated during their science studies. So here are my references and thank you. So thank you, Helen. So we have
three minutes and 50 seconds worth of questions, so please. Questions? Nobody wants to ask. She's a teacher, she can answer. Yeah, please, Mara. Mario Pick, University of Tartu. Um, I have such a question. How much do you use the active scientists in your teaching, in your gymnasium teaching? Uh, you have colleagues in biology, geography, geology. Uh, do you use their knowledge, their practice in research, in doing science, uh, in teaching students? Actually, yes. I, I think that this is also something that uh, uh, needs, I need a bit more effort into it as well. Uh, but of course, we are sharing our experience as, as a researcher as well. I have int introduced my own research and also uh, the results as well. Uh, and uh, what I see, have seen uh, from, my, um, from my experience is that um, it's, it is necessary to take some time to collaborate with your colleagues in that manner that, especially in the gymnasium level, uh, when we think about biology, there are so many strong links with chemistry as well. And uh, for that, it is necessary for teachers to do collaboration during uh, when they give the same courses, like when they teach in biology, the biomolecules, and in chemistry, the organic or non-organic then, of course, there are strong links, and that's what I propose as well, that we have, as a different uh, science teachers, we have to collaborate and uh, to see the different uh, ways how to make the learning more meaningful for students as well. So, one more question. Peter. So the priority comes to the elder staff members. When you were talking about uh, studying uh, in more interdisciplinary way, contrary to the way that you study one subject and then another one, I was starting to think that uh, perhaps uh, the picture is a bit similar that putting together a picture in one way, when you do it subject by su uh, in sub in subject wise, you, like a puzzle, you learn one small piece, you learn an another small piece, and at the end, it all falls together. Mm -hmm. So the good, really appreciated moment comes at the very end. But if you do it very interdisciplinary, isn't it that like, well, I don't know, do you know even how it works when you are developing a real picture using a silver chloride, etc. things like, like in old days, that you are developing the picture and you are developing a picture, it's mm -hmm. ca kind of gray and haze and you don't see anything and then at one moment you see, oh, the picture is there. So when you do it subject by subject, you can encourage students to have a small but clear pictures, pieces of picture and you just have to trust uh, that at one moment it falls together in one big piece. And another way, you just have a haze and haze and haze, and then you hope that miraculously in one moment you will have a picture. Mm -hmm. um, can, you con can, can, you, can you overturn my reasoning and say that no, the interdisciplinary is still good? No, I will just say that that is something that I have discussed a lot of time, at times with my colleagues as well. I will say that it is, of course, there has to be strong uh, emphasis on the content and also on the disi uh, disciplines as well, because without it, of course, uh, we will face on other challenges uh, that are something uh, in, uh, in uh, what can uh, be seen as a catastrophe as well. But uh, I will just say that it is uh, important to give this disciplinary content to the students, but uh, if that is seen, then to link the interdisciplinary to it as well. I'm not going to propose that we will start with this interdisciplinary learning. Not that. Before comes this disciplinary content and then the interdisciplinary as well. So before that, yeah. Very good timing.
Thank you. Uh, I like to use uh, other metaphor, not, not uh, a puzzle picture, but uh, uh, assembling uh, line. Uh, how we overcome the gap and exactly the timing gap between two assembling uh, lines of chemistry or biology, for example? I, um, I will say that uh, it, this is also something that uh, has, to be, uh, has to be discussed in uh, um, wider um, level as well, in this curriculum level. But of course, uh, uh, there is also this kind of opportunity for science <laughs> teachers as well to do this kind of collaboration uh, to discuss when, it, when is this right time to concentrate on what uh, course and so on. So it depends a lot on the schools and how they will organize them uh, when they teach different courses as well. So I would just say that to that. So thank you now. <laughs>